Friday, everybody. So on the channel, we had a bunch of questions about sign inverters, and I believe Ron here is going to be able to answer every question. Ron here is from Southeast Power Systems. What do we have here, Ron? Well, actually, what we've got here today is a assortment of inverter and inverter chargers that are commonly used in the RV industry. Uh, we have several different manufacturers here. We have Magnum and we have Xantrex being the most two popular. Um, both of them are excellent quality inverters. They both do basically the same thing. They, they give you power whenever you're on your dry camping or whenever you're not plugged up to shore power. Uh, and the way they accomplish that is they'll, pay, they'll take the 12 volt DC current and they'll invert it into 120 volts AC current and they'll deplete the batteries down and of course the batteries have to be recharged at that time. So that's the basic operation of an inverter system. Uh, there are two different types. There's modified sine wave and there is pure sine wave. Pure sine wave being the, the best, that's basically the, the power that's reproduced by that is just like what comes out of your sockets in your house. It's what they call grid power quality. Um, modified sign has been used in the industry for many, many years and it's, it works well for just about everything. But with the new sensitive electronics that are coming out today, pure sine wave seems to be uh, what everybody wants to move to. So are they built differently? Is, like how, how is it actually different within the inverter itself from it, modified to pure? Actually a good question. The inverter itself has, has microprocessor based components in it which switch the current. I know it's, it's without a drawing or without some way to actually show you this, it's a little hard to describe. But it takes the current where a modified sine is more square like this when it comes out on an oscilloscope. The pure sine wave is curved and it's nice and neat and it's nice and clean where the modifying has more of a square and it's and it's hard harder on equipment to start things and it may make noise and microwaves and different appliances where the pure sine wave does not. It, it runs and operates your equipment much better, but all of that is done internally by the electronic components. Um, and the big reason that pure sine wave is more available nowadays is because of the advancement in electronics. Years ago, they couldn't produce mass quantities of pure sine wave units for the cost. Uh, they, they modified sine wave was much, much cheaper to produce, so therefore they could, they, that was the inverter of choice for many, many years. So modified versus uh, pure price-wise, how does that compare? Nowadays it's not bad. They used to years ago it was quite a big, big uh, price difference. Nowadays you're looking at about a four or five hundred dollar price difference between a modified sine wave and a pure sine wave inverter. So a lot of people that are viewing this video that are interested in the channel, they're interested in going full time. A lot of them have mobile businesses, they're trying to get online businesses started. How would a larger laptop affect a pure, pure sign or even a modified in terms of uh, maybe a, a five hour jaunt where somebody's working on something? How, how would that work with these inverters? Okay. First of all, any, any type of sensitive electronics, I would definitely recommend a pure sine wave inverter charger system again everything is going to hinge on consumption and battery bank because the inverter the key thing to remember about any inverter is it's only going to be as good as the battery bank you have it connected to so if you don't have a bit in a big enough battery bank and it's not properly maintained and charged you're not going to get the runtime out of anything but if all of those factors are met if you if you've determined how much wattage you're actually going to be using You've determined how big of a battery bank you're going to need to power the equipment for the length of time that you're typically operating. Um, you, you have to just make sure that the batteries are properly charged while you're, you know, while, while you have the opportunity to either a run a generator or b plug into shore power. So those are the key factors with that. You have to understand how much power you're going to be consuming. Make sure that your battery bank is capable of providing that power for the length of time that you need it. And a lot of people are interested in solar power, like as a way of being boondocking and you know not not having to connect to anything. Um, in terms of solar power in relation to these inverters, is there anything they should specifically know about inverters tied with solar? Not really. The solar panels are, are pretty much an independent system. They, they have a charge controller. The solar panels feed the charge controller and the charge controller goes right down to the batteries. 
So it's an excellent thing to have on your vehicle, on your on your coach, if you can get it, because then you can utilize this, the sun to give you that extra charge. Uh, definitely helps maintain the batteries much better. But to answer your question, no, there's there's nothing they need to know. All of that is a, a totally independent system, so it should work all by itself, and the inverter will do its little thing too. So in terms of inverters, is there necessarily a big advantage or disadvantage using, say, multiple 12 volt batteries for six volt batteries? Okay. The, that, that has always been a big question in the industry. We find in the service side that using six volt batteries wired together in series or parallel or both provide the most power or for lack of a better term more bang for your buck than the 12 volt system because you have more fuel tanks to pull from because the battery's bank is actually just a fuel tank for your inverter. So the more tanks you have, the more volume you have. So you can get more out of a six volt battery system that's wired together than typically if you just had the 12 volt batteries. Um, it, it, they just seem to, to hold much better. The maintenance on them is a little bit more. That would be the, about the only disadvantage is you have a little bit more maintenance and a little bit more wiring to the six volt system versus the 12 volt system. So somebody that's getting into, say, building their own self-made camper or somebody that has an RV and they're looking for a pure sine wave. When they're building these systems, when they're first starting these systems, do you have any suggestions in terms of wires or controllers or breakers or in, and would you also suggest them to kind of overbuild, if you will, for the future? Yes, absolutely. I, if, if you have the opportunity to design your own system, you always want to plan for a little bit more because everybody typically will want to put something else into their coach that they hadn't thought of prior to the actual installation. So yes, that's definitely a good idea. If you can do that, you want to make room for additional batteries, if you can. Um, you want to make uh, have some wiring in there for some different appliances, some different things that, uh, that you may not uh, have considered. Uh, I always recommend now that pure sine wave just seems to be the way to go, so uh, they should look at a, a pure sine wave inverter charger. The reason I recommend an inverter charger is because that takes a component out of the system. It takes, uh, ha you have an inverter and a charger all in one unit, so that all you have to do is you're, you're putting in one unit versus some people will put in an inverter and then they'll have to have a battery charger wired into the system to maintain it as well. So there's, there's a lot of things you can, if you put a little thought into it ahead of time, if you have that opportunity, uh, yes, I would definitely go that route. So in terms of these inverters, if somebody was building a large system, you said some people, they will add something later they weren't expecting. Say if they add, let's do a large electronic, let's say like your washer and dryer unit that seems to be popular these days. Um, what type of inverter would you need and how would you need to rig that system? Okay. Uh, that is a good question, and anything like a any any large appliance like that is going to draw a tremendous amount of power. So, number one, you got to find out if it's going to be 220 or 1 110, and then you're going to have to find out how much power that's going to consume. Now, again, going back to the batteries, the inverter is only going to be as good as your batteries. So, if you don't have a big enough battery bank to sustain any length of time or provide the power that that inverter is going to need. It's not going to work. So typically, large appliances like water heaters, washer dryers, air AC systems are not powered from the inverter systems. They typically, you will have to either plug into shore power or start your generator to run those appliances. Um, they can be they can be wired into an inverter system, but you're going to have to have a very large battery bank, and you're going to have to have typically a combination of two large inverters wired together in your system. They'll have to be series to gear it together. So basically there's much better systems out there in place if you need to run your washer and dryer or some large electronic. It's better to, well, from, from what I'm getting, it's better just to keep your generator on or hook up to shore power when those things are specifically needed. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's so much less wear and tear and stress on your system. Um, most motor coaches, that's the way they're wired anyway. They only give you so many outlets that are wired through the inverter. Uh, the, and they do that because they, they don't want to overpower the inverter. They, there is limitations to everything. And of course the battery bank is the key. Again, it's always the key to how long and, and how much power you can get out of your inverter system. Absolutely.